what are the most common causes of data breaches? You know, I spoke of ransomware. Um, what, uh, what, what are the, do the forensic investigators that frequently find is the, is the leading cause of a breach? Good, uh, good question, Rob. And I, I notice it came shortly after raised its ugly head, which I'm not going to take personally. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you know um, we, we'll be talking a lot about ransomware. Uh, but there are actually some some really core commonalities between all these kinds of attacks, whether it's uh, uh, you know an attack on um, credit card data, on personnel files. Uh, whether it's a, a search for banking credentials or, or whatever the kind of attack. And, and, and really one thing in particular uh, that, that is common to many attacks uh, and many causes is imp lack of input validation. And, you know, so let's take ransomware. Um, and, and this is kind of a twisted use of input validation, but Somebody didn't think before they clicked on an email link or an email attachment and uh, they triggered an infection on their system. And, and I would say that that kind of attack, uh, sending a booby-trapped email, is, is still probably the go-to vector for criminals. Uh, it... it, it depends on somebody, first of all, it depends on the organization not filtering their email properly, then it depends on the person clicking on something they really shouldn't click on, and then for spread, it depends on the lack of segmentation of that system. But there's also a, a, uh, a group of attacks like SQL injection, and local file inclusion, which come at organizations' websites. And again, those, and cross-site scripting, those things are, are a lack of technical input validation. So the sort of the sense is that, you're, that organizations are exposing themselves by not validating uh, incoming traffic sufficiently. And so what we see in forensic situations, uh, when we go to look at this, is you know how did they get in? Did they um, did was it a click? Um, was it uh, a script that was run, or was it, and this is uh, happens way too often, um, a brute force attack on something that was password protected? So uh, something mm -hmm. that you know I can say our our support people have seen a lot of lately is brute force RDP attacks using the remote desktop protocol that sits on a lot of servers. It's apparently not well protected in some organizations. Somebody brute forces the password. They got onto the server. They turn off the endpoint protection, and then they go in there and do whatever. And, and we're seeing ransomware being distributed like that. And so we often find in the forensic phase that endpoint protection was turned off for some reason on a machine. Uh, it was turned off by the attacker, or somebody had turned it off to test a machine, or all sorts of reasons. Or it wasn't on there, or it was out of date. And we many, many times see that an attack, a breach, could have been prevented. Yeah, th th those are some really good points, Stephen. The um, the other thing that seems to come up very often is uh, stolen account credentials. Something as simple as that. Uh, the attacker doesn't even need to to use malware in that case. They can just get in using stolen uh, account credentials. Why is that happening so often? Well, I think there's a huge market out there. Well, I know there's a huge market out there for uh, stolen credentials, and so. Yeah. If you're if you're in uh, in the bad guy business, um, yeah, you can. And in fact, in terms of your RDP, you can go and uh, rent or buy a compromised RDP uh, access. 